Hi and welcome back to my channel. This is one of those projects that took a lot longer to make than I thought. So this video is going to be a bit long. So grab a snack, sit down, relax and watch me make stuff. It's a Regency Spencer jacket we're making. Starting off with the collar. Marking center back. Both on the basting and on the collar itself. Now I'm ironing on. And I made that mistake to go directly. So I ended up <laughs> melting a bit of the basting. So I ripped it off cut out some new basting and then I found a piece of paper and ironed it that way so it won't stuck to my iron pro tip trust me see all fine and smooth and now I'm again just putting on the marks on my pieces, these are the front pieces, both on the lining and on the outside fabric, with the fashion fabric. I'm using a green wool and a black silk for the lining. Putting in darts. Marking center front on both fabric pieces and doing the same on the lining. And here I'm just putting on the basting on the fashion fabric as it says in the description. Again, ironing on a piece of paper instead of directly on the fabric. And now I'm going to be doing the same thing to the sleeve, putting on basting. It's always a good thing to remember all your marks gathering places, especially with sleeves. And now I'm going to attempt to put on the design on the sleeve. I'm using something called carbon paper or carbon paper and this poking rolling thing. It turned out okay, kinda. But I decided only to take the middle part of the design. As you can see here, I've put on some cotton tape, pinned it in place, took forever. <laughs> Now I'm going to be sewing that on with the sewing machine. Nice and easy. This was the easy part of the, of the design. And this is what took the most time. Not assembling the 
jacket itself, but putting all all of the but putting on all of the details. And here it is, sewn on. It's not perfect, but it's there. Now I'm putting in the dots. There are only dots on the front piece, two on each side. And here we have the dots in. Now I am sewing on the sleeves, which was a bit tricky because the wool fabric is a bit too thick and not as forgiving as I thought it would be. So if I'm ever going to make a jacket like this again, I'm definitely going to take some, some more forgiving wool fabric. So it ended up being all wobbly at the top. So here I'm just finding the places where it's the worst. And then I'm going to pick that up, or pick it apart, and then try again. You don't always have to seam rip the whole sleeve. Sometimes you can just take a part of it. As you can see, it's not complying. And now I'm just marking center front. because I'm not sure that the chalk is going to stay. And here you can see it with the pink thread. And here I'm going here I'm sewing on the collar. I have sewn on the lining on the collar first and then wrong side together and then flipped it then made a little stitch and now I'm just sewing it on on the jacket because I'm going to be hand sewing on the lining so this made most sense to me here it is on lovely Sorry about the glare from the window. I don't live in the biggest apartment. So I've just pinned the seams together, making sure that it all fits and it's not pulling too much. I think it's okay. Beautiful black silk. Sometimes it's easier. It's easier to do it by hand. Other times it's easier to do it by machine. This time I thought it was better doing it by hand, so I wouldn't fog it all up or destroy the silk if I had to uh, seam rip it, which I didn't. This is also one of the reasons why this project took so long because I ended up sewing much of it by hand.
here you can see it's sewn on or sewn together with a little whip stitch. Kinda okay. And again, I'm sorry for for the glare from the window. And this part took forever, <laughs> and I'm not even sure that I'm doing it right. So if you know a better technique for putting on the, this. Um, thread or binding or whatever you want to call it then please tell me please comment down below to do this easier because at some point I was looking at this and going hmm yeah no this is not working no this is no this is not working <laughs> and I just kept on going because I didn't know how else to do this without yeah but I like the results, the result of it, definitely. But there must be an easier way. I got this idea that I could use these nip naps to kind of weigh it down and then remove some of the, the pins and then fold up the pattern piece and then pin it to the to the fabric so I wouldn't miss um, you know the, the the button holes or you know where you put in your buttons because you, I'm not going to make, um, I'm not going to make buttonholes, but but this thread or binding is going to work as a buttonhole. Now I'm just tagging it so it won't go anywhere. You know, in the end, it worked out, but it just took forever. And it still, it still isn't straight, all the way straight. And, but you know, it's a design choice. It's handmade and it's okay that it looks handmade. Even though I wish <laughs> it was a bit more precise. And my fingers were killing me after doing this. Because the, the wool fabric is pretty pretty rough sewing through with a sewing needle even though it was a almost brand new sewing needle and as you can see I'm fiddling a lot with it to make the lines straight trying not to pull it too much. And what I did here was I pressed the pins all the way through and I'm going to tag the other side of the little black ribbons. But this resulted in me poking my fingers like a thousand times because the pins were sticking through to the to the lining side of the jacket. So yeah, if you know a better way, then please tell me.
last one and I'm going to pull out all the pins in the pattern piece and I'm going to pin it all again I feel like this is double work Because in theory I could have done this from the beginning but I wasn't sure how or I didn't know a, a great technique so that's why I did all the other stuff first I wasn't sure upon my own abilities to do it right that's why I had the pattern piece on first Here it's all fastened, one side sewn and one side not. If you follow me on Instagram, you have already seen this. As you can see, it's not pretty, not yet, but it's going to be, trust me. So I'm just going back and forth, and round and back and forth and round and trying my best to keep the line straight. I'm glad that the, that the jacket isn't bigger than it is, so it wasn't that hard putting it through the, through the sewing machine. I didn't have a full length jacket to whirl around.
now I'm finishing the jack by closing the bottom with my little nip naps. A nice little tool. The reason why I'm doing this by hand is because the fabric was going to be too too thick to put through the sewing machines. And now I'm going to make my own buttons with some of the black silk. This is fairly easy. Putting the one in, putting the fabric inside of it, and then putting the back on. then pressing down with this little tool and here you have a button a fabric button that is going to match whatever you're making see that's awesome and this part took forever too <laughs> putting on buttons especially because there are 30 buttons on this jacket even though it's not even yeah, even though it's not even a full length jacket. And here it is, all done and lovely. Again, sorry for the glare from the window. I do only live in a room, one room apartment. I used up all the buttons and here it is. All buttoned up and done. I have afterwards put on another row on the bottom because when I wear it, it would uh, pull apart on the bottom, so I had to put on another row. Here it is unbuttoned. As you can see, there are no buttonholes, only the string that works as the buttonhole. It's one of those pieces where it looks horrible up close, but awesome from far away. Ordinary cares. Thank you so much for watching, hope it wasn't too long <laughs> and I hope that you will be joining me next time. Bye for now.